Second problem says, what is the distance between two charges, Q1, 26 microcolumns, and Q2, negative 47 microcolumns, if the electrostatic force between them is 5.7 newtons? So this is a little bit less than a plug and chug problem. It's not so simple that you just plug in values and calculate a force, but essentially you're going to be using Coulomb's law for all these problems. So what is Coulomb's law? Same thing again. It's 8.99 times 10 to the 9 times Q1 times Q2 over R squared. And this guy says, what is the distance between two charges? So we're going to be calculating R if the electrostatic force is 5.7 newtons. So the force between them is 5.7 newtons. So let me just go and continue to write this down. 8.99 times 10 to the 9. Now what do I have for Q1 and Q2? Q1 is 26 microcolumns. So what you have is that's 26 times 10 to the minus 6. Because micro means 10 to the minus 6. 26 times 10 to the minus 6 columns or coulombs. Um, Q2 is negative 47 microcolumns. Now remember, when I use Coulomb's law, I'm generally not going to put my negative signs in here. It just makes it easier for me to think about. So 47 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, coulombs. And over the bottom, I'm just going to put R squared because that's what I'm trying to calculate. Right? Now, we know that one of these charges is positive and we know that one of these charges is negative. So the charges just tell you that they're going to be attracting each other, and that's actually what it says. The electrostatic force between them is 5.7 newtons. So that just tells you one of these things is positively charged, one of these things is negatively charged, and they're going to attract each other. Putting the negative sign in here doesn't really add any additional information because the magnitude of what you calculate is exactly equal to what's over here. If you stuck a negative in here, you're just going to get confused because you'll have a negative on this side of the equation and you'll have a, not a negative over here and you can get into a situation where you end up calculating a negative r or in this case you'll try to solve for r squared and take the square root of a negative number and get really confused. So that's why I'm telling you that yes we put negative and positive charges on, uh, signs on the charges to tell us if they're going to attract or repel but that's really the only reason we, we do it. When you're using Coulomb's law, it's a lot easier just to put the numbers in there and just think about what the sign is telling you to understand the physics of the problem. Okay? Enough preaching. So let's continue on uh, to this. So if I take the 5.7 and I divide by this, 8.99 times 10 to the 9, I'm going to get 6.3 times 10 to the negative 10 on the left-hand side. On the right, so I'm just divided by this. On the right, I'm just going to multiply these two numbers together. 1.2 times 10 to the minus 9 over r squared. Over r squared. So to solve for r, let's multiply by r. So we get 6.3 times 10 to the negative 10 r squared. Just multiply here. On the right, we're just going to be left with the 1.2 times 10 to the negative 9. So to solve for r squared, we'll just divide both sides by this. So r squared will equal 1.2. 9 when you take this and divide it by this. And so r, when you take the square root of both sides, is going to be 1.4, and you're always dealing in meters, so it's 1.4 meters. So you see what I'm trying to say. If you tried to put a negative sign in here without thinking through exactly what, what was happening, you might get into a situation where this is negative, so when you solve for r squared, you'd get a negative number, and you try to take the square root, and you know that the square root of negative number is imaginary, so your calculator is going to return an error and you're not going to know what's going on. There are different ways to do this, so your book might tell you something different, but my advice is just put the numbers in here. Don't put the signs in here. Don't put any signs on the force over here, and you are just going to have to remember at the end of the day that these charges, since they're opposite, means it's an attractive force. That's really all that that's trying to tell you, and the force was given to you in the problem, 5.7 newtons. So these guys are 1.4 meters apart. Okay, now we're going to get into some problems that are a little bit more challenging and require you to do a little more thinking ahead of time to set them up properly. Uh, there won't be as much of the plug and chug variety, so let's get into it. Charges.